Hello and welcome to the Political Opinions Podcast, where every opinion is given equal footing and political tolerance and debate are given their proper attention in a world where both are on the decline. Today's episode will cover different opinions on pedestrianisation. We've all been there, painfully wasting away in a city centre traffic jam. It seems like the whole world has decided to drive here at the same time, and now you are stuck as a result. But what if there was a solution to this age-old problem? What if we simply removed all the cars? Well, that is what pedestrianisation does. It creates zones, usually around city centres and busy commercial areas where no cars or vehicles can drive. Councils in the UK seem to be competing with one another to pedestrianise as much space as possible. But is all truly well with this practice? Is pedestrianisation as good as some suggest? Or is it merely another failed policy idea? Today, we will unpack and compare these opinions. It's common sense that lots of traffic, plus lots of pedestrians, equals a high risk of traffic collisions. But if we say, remove all the cars, then the risk will disappear. No more of the narrow streets of our historic towns and cities crammed with angry drivers, but instead of flowing with happy pedestrians content in the knowledge they are safe and secure. And not only are they safe and secure, but they are much healthier and greener. Now, I don't mean to say they have become Martians, potentially, but instead, they are simply not emitting harmful chemicals by driving. Removing cars makes the air and environment around city centres much cleaner and contributes to less carbon emissions overall, because there are less cars. Now, this shopper's utopia keeps getting better. Removing the cars means the pavements can now take up the entire road space. Shoppers are no longer forced onto narrow strips of concrete, but instead can gracefully flow around the entire street. This is highly practical, as you can now carry your many shopping bags without constantly hitting people and objects. Now, this practicality and beautiful bliss is also highly attractive. Former motorists are now encouraged to use their feet for walking, not driving. Not only because they have no choice and can't physically drive there, but also because they want to experience this new city centre revolution for themselves. A perfect world without noise and traffic pollution from cars. Now, not only are the pedestrians now happy, but so too will be the shop owners. More people walking around means more potential customers for your shops, cafes and so on. The increased footfall provides opportunities for the local economy and could save the dying high street. Now, this economic benefit is hoped to be very high, with more shops making money, more rent being charged, more taxes being collected, more jobs being made and so on. By removing the dreaded car from our roads, we can help build the perfect society and the perfect economy to match it. To be honest, it all sounds too good to be true. The reason it might sound too good to be true is because it likely is. Pedestrianised zones have many drawbacks. This idea of safer streets ignores the fact that there are risks beyond cars. Sure, in car versus man, car will win, but so too will man lose in knife versus man and many other fights. Pedestrianised zones may see an increase in crime, as it is ultimately far easier to steal from someone on foot than someone in a car, and it may be harder to get emergency response personnel there as quickly, worsening that risk. Now, if I were to tell you that there is more to life than a city centre, how would you respond? To be honest, I don't care. What I do care about is the massive increase in carbon emissions pedestrian zones could actually create. If all the motorists that would be driving through the city now have to go around it to avoid the zone, they instead face longer journeys. This means that carbon emissions are spread over an even greater area, likely with longer journeys. People may also have to drive further to new places if they don't want to walk to the pedestrianised areas, 
meaning their journeys and driving in total also goes up. A key reason they may drive elsewhere is because they cannot walk. Think of all the elderly and disabled people who require vehicle assistance to get around. It's all good for Sporticus to zip around the town when old grandma cannot push her wheelchair a further mile because she can't drive there anymore. Pedestrianised zones are only really practical for the people who live in their direct vicinity and people who essentially commuted into these zones or just drove in regularly will now find it much harder to do so. Well, this means that the problems are simply being pushed elsewhere. Drivers and traffic, instead of disappearing, will simply move to areas around the pedestrianised zones, where traffic and emissions will ultimately be worse. It, again, it's all good for people living in or near the pedestrianised area, but for those too far away, their lives are further inconvenienced. Now, all of this might have been worth it if it saved the glorious high street. Sadly, that may not be the case. Pedestrianised areas, as I have said earlier, face higher crime risks as well as, for example, more antisocial behaviour. What this could ultimately do is reduce the footfall, particularly at night time. For example, getting home at night is already unsafe for many women. But if they now face walking as there are no taxis and there's police around because they don't like walking and they want to be sitting in their cars, then the risk again goes up even more. This will mean the potential economic benefits may not really be appreciated. Even if footfall did increase, the accompanied rise in, for example, rent means that it is highly likely only big brand stores would be able to afford the rent there, forcing out smaller shops and meaning the high street isn't saved. And finally, let's take a second to think about the potential sectors that are harmed by this decision. For example, bus drivers, delivery drivers and taxis. If they cannot operate in the city centre, then they will lose a massive amount of their trade. And sure, you could have areas where only buses and taxis can go, but that doesn't solve the wider issue at hand. A lot of people don't use the city centre not because of cars, but because shops like Amazon exist. Why leave the house for something when I can just buy it online? And I'm still going to buy it online, even if there's an area without any cars, but it's a half hour walk away, for example. Now that we've unpacked these opinions, let's do the next step, comparing them. On this question of safety, some believe pedestrianised zones will be safer because there are less cars on the road, or essentially no cars on the road, meaning that there will simply be less traffic collisions between cars and cars, or more likely pedestrians and cars. Others, however, believe you'll get unsafe areas in a different way. So essentially that instead of having traffic collisions, you're going to get increased crime because it's ultimately easier to steal from someone on foot. On this question of the environment, some believe the air and environment will be better not only in the pedestrianised zone, because there won't be emissions there, but also in the wider area, because there are less cars on the road. Others, however, believe this less cars effect won't really happen. Instead, motorists will face longer journeys going around these new zones, meaning there are more emissions spread over a greater area. On the question of practicality, some believe it will be more practical for pedestrians, because they have more space. They can walk around, they can even cycle, if you're allowed to in that area, far more easily without the risk of cars clogging up the road. Others, however, believe it's impractical and only benefits the people directly living there, particularly elderly and disabled people who can't as easily walk around, and for those living further away who have to spend more time travelling in. On this question of how it impacts traffic, some believe you'll have less traffic because you'll have less cars and there'll also be less noise and traffic pollution as a result. Others, however, believe that you will simply push the problem elsewhere, and there will be increased traffic in places away from the pedestrianised zones, as people find alternative routes instead. On the question of how it might impact the footfall of the area, some believe with only having pedestrians, there will be increased footfall in these zones, and this is better for the local economy because there are more customers to potentially serve. 
Others, however, believe footfall might fall, particularly at night time, because there will be more increased risk of crime and more potential antisocial behavior turning people away. And finally, on the question of the economy, some believe pedestrianized zones will help the economy by providing more potential customers, more rent and other positive knock-on effects, say more jobs, and all of this can save the high street. Others, however, are less optimistic and believe that not only will local shops not be able to afford potentially higher rent prices, but it will greatly damage certain economic sectors that rely on the footfall using vehicles within the city centre, such as again deliveries, taxis and buses. And then, although you don't see it on screen, let's just finish with this final question of what is the real issue at hand? Some believe the key issue here are cars, surprisingly, given they want to remove them, and that by removing cars, all will be well. Others, however, believe the issue isn't with cars, but with wider problems on the high street and city centres, and pedestrianisation does not solve the real issue, but merely pushes it elsewhere. Overall then, those supporting pedestrianisation believe it will solve many problems with the narrow and cramped city centres, particularly in the UK. It will free up space, make the areas more pleasant and increase footfall. Others, however, believe that it is the wrong approach and will cause many unintended consequences, which ultimately might do more harm than good. The drive to rid the city centres of cars within the UK shows no sign of slowing down. With the introduction of electric cars, this might change. But until that day does or doesn't occur, we will have to wait and see whether the blended approach to pedestrianisation or potential total removal of vehicles entirely produces the results so many politicians supporting it claim will occur. As always, I would love to hear your thoughts on the topic in the comments or on Twitter. Be sure to check back on Monday for another episode. Thank you all for listening and I hope to see you soon.